Lewis is mad because I ended the last episode without using the Team Double Dragon generator. I don't have it open, Lewis. I'm busy trying to team win. Team Dispassionate Drywall. Okay. Team Dispassionate Drywall. That sounds good to me. Anyway, Thank we're back. Um, we were talking about iOS games and the games that we all love to hate. Well, to you play. were. I was yeah. talking about sick Wogan. days. You were, t you were getting I'm all Wogan. depressed about Wogan. And I it still wasn't am. Beca wasn't still becoming of you. Get out of the dumpster, Lewis. Uh, Come on. Uh, okay. Get your... Get your pecker up. So, Come on. So tell me about get, what other... Get it up and start... <laughs> start start pounding it. away. Start pounding away. Come on. Just just, just hide your troubles just, in a, just in a woman. In a just warm, masturbate a lot. In a warm vagina. Uh, <laughs> in a what? In a warm you can't, vagina. You can't say that. Uh, you can't say that. Anyway, he's just said it. But anyway, so we can talk about Wogan again if you want, but honestly, I wanted to kill myself last time. It was really sad. Listen, I mean, it is sad. This, okay, this, Terry Wogan is yeah. like a bit of an, like a British institution upon himself, isn't he? he like, is. If you're not from the UK, you know, if you're American, you're listening to this right now and you don't really have any idea about UK culture, or whatever, you got to appreciate that Wogan is basically the equivalent of like Johnny uh, Carson. Regis. Well, I don't know if he's Johnny Carson. I mean, Johnny Carson was really something else. He's more of a Regis, I think. <laughs> okay, he's maybe. Like, he's like Regis, okay? Okay. Um, so imagine Regis has died, and that's and you listened to Regis, and you watched Regis and Kathy Lee like all the time and stuff when you were small, like Lewis did. Um, and that's why Lewis is so bummed out about Well, when Terry I was small, Wogan it was recent, away. relatively. I was listening to his stuff, you know. Oh, sorry. So it was yeah. like not too long ago. I really enjoyed it. Okay, radio fine. Show. Sorry. It's only a technicality. I mean, I didn't. It was very waffly, very kind of slow. You know, he, 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 every morning, you know, you've got, you've got to give respect to someone who gets up and goes, does a live radio show every morning for like 10 years or more. Um, True. And. Man, those people who do their breakfast shows, it's tough. They, I think they start at like 6.30 or 7. Like Joe Wiley? And then they, they finish up at like 9, 9.30. Radio 1 Breakfast? I think that's... Um, I don't know who that is doing that. It's I don't think I could Joe listen Wiley, to Radio 1 Breakfast. Isn't I don't know about some, you, but... someone much younger and cooler doing Radio 1 Breakfast show. The days. problem with Radio 1 is they play all this music that I have no idea what it is. You know, like, it's all like, and here's the latest from uh, Super Zoomer, Zoomer 5 million, and it's dubstep. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? It's like, all right, everybody, get ready for breakfast. Let's listen to dubstep. Well, 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 well. And I'm just like, well. I'm not sure that's what it's like. I don't want to listen to Radio Certainly 1 ever again now. It's very pop, okay? They have a, a set playlist, which is assigned by some guy. Uh, so they have like 20 songs on loop, so yeah. you hear the same songs over and over again because they only change them every like couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like playing... Or maybe Radio 1's just pushing a millennial agenda. Maybe. Do you remember when you had uh, like an album, okay, a musical album, Yeah. Uh, on a CD or something? Uh -huh. This is like yeah. a completely forgotten thing, I guess, now. And right. it was the only one you had, or it was in your CD player and you just you played it on loop did you have any albums like that that you played on loop um, um I lived with a guy who had Killers the first Killers album and on on CD on CD and Killers were like the Napster era though weren't they uh no it was it was called Mr. Brightside the one with that on it uh is that the, which album is it well we'll find out I'll Google it but basically he had it on loop for about a year and i heard right. that album probably five times a day i mean for us it was smells like teen spirit that was on loop a lot um, just that one enter song. sandman by metallica was on constant loop a lot uh... um and what else oh yeah that house of pain song you know jump around Oh, back it up, back it in. Let God. me begin. Some Fuck songs me. you end up. We actually wore so a cassette much. tape out, re-listening to that song. 
Like it was just huge when it came out. I don't know if you remember, but you had a big was... boombox on your shoulder. <clears throat> no, you nothing like that. No, it was just we had, you know, I had one of those cassette players, like a double, so you could tape other cassettes on it. Okay. Pirate. And um, piracy. Yes, it was like early piracy. And um, so basically... Home taping is piracy. That's right. So you'd, you'd borrow the tape from your friend or whatever, and then you'd be like, just lend it to me tonight so I can tape it. And then you'd tape it onto your own cassette, and you'd like photocopy like the <laughs> album art and stuff to make it like almost like you have the tape, but it's not quite the tape sort of thing. I never went quite went that far. It was never quite the, sh the same either to have... Did you ever make your own mixtapes and stuff? Um... Did I, you ever make a mixtape and give it to a friend? No. Like, here's a mixtape? Well, do you know what my... Um, weirdly, my granddad made me... Made me a mixtape. Mix and okay. it was all Frank Sinatra to for To try some and reason. get me into his sort of kind of music. So he had bought um, some... He was a big cassette player, musical guy, and he had a lot of jazz. Oh, yeah. And he was putting a lot of jazz onto cassettes to listen to in the car, I think, or something like this. And so he gave me a, a collection. He made me um, a tape with a load of jazz on it, which is quite a nice, a nice thing. I remember being about. I think I, I was. I think I was only about six or seven. He made you though. a jazz mixtape. Yeah. So it was. It was only. It was about 1990. When what the it. fuck, I man? know, it was a Seriously? very long time ago. Are you for real? That actually happened? That actually happened, yeah. Jesus. So it, had all, it had all the greats on there. Right. All the greats. Chattanooga like... Choo Choo. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. It's uh, classic, yeah. And, um, Vintage um, granddad jazz, that one. I can't really remember any other <laughs> that was on it. It's just like a ton of Little Richard on there for some reason. <laughs> 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 Fucking, I don't know. We were talking about this yesterday. We were saying, I was talking to Shin and Alex about it. And we were saying, remember when Napster first came out? And I was saying, yeah, I remember when it came out. Like when, when it came out and I downloaded Napster for the first time, searched for a song. I think the first song I searched for was You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. Okay. And it was just sort of like, to show my household that I had this ability now to obtain random music whenever I wanted to. And like, I didn't have to own the CD or go out and buy anything. Like I could just download this music and everybody was like so fucking blown away. They were like, what the hell? And here we are the whole house listening to You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer on full blast, like out of my computer. And then that sort of, you know, prompted this whole like, Find some Brian Ferry! Hey! Can you find some talking heads? Like, these are my parents asking for all this stuff. And they're, you know, they're like, Oh, find this one obscure song that I don't have, like, on a CD somewhere or whatever. And it was, like, this huge thing, right? Because yeah. everybody was like, Oh my god, we can listen to whatever music we want to whenever we want to. We don't have to have, like, a gigantic cabinet filled with CDs and stuff like that. And it was pretty exciting. I'm, Napster coming out was huge. It's a different world, wasn't it? And uh, it's really sometimes nice to show off things like that to people as well. Say, hey, look, yeah. I could just... Uh, it makes you feel powerful in a way when you talk to someone from an older generation who yeah. is blown away so, by your... I got MC Hammer at my fingertips here, everybody. What do you think about that? It, it, I mean, it's kind of like that now, or it has been like that now for 10 years with other things too, in a way. You can pretty much download any TV show or, or film like pirate pirate wise um, because there isn't really a kind of uh, I mean bear in mind iTunes and Spotify have a lot of TV shows films and music on them anyway that you yeah. can pretty much buy anything um, it's just we have all this at our fingertips and it's it's kind of it's great I think in a way we didn't have that growing up um, and I worry no. that it, well, I don't worry necessarily, but I think that the, um, you, you know, it was like in your house, right? Before yeah. you found Napster, okay? There was no music. There was It was the same album, that Killers album played over and over again. Or, <laughs> no, it was not the Killers album. It was some, um, part of the problem was as well that you didn't even necessarily know if you really wanted, were going to like the music before you bought it, okay? In a sense. 
I think when you yeah. went to a record shop and you saw a record, you would buy it based on other people's say so uh, or reviews or whatever. I guess people still do. Um, well, remember, you used to buy singles a lot, remember? Because the idea was that it was like six bucks for a single album as opposed to like 15 bucks for the full album. But the thing is, oftentimes you'd buy the full album and you would only listen to that one song you wanted to listen to anyway. That's true. It was never... So... It was, it was, it, albums, they never had anything good in them. <laughs> Just that one good song. I, I, that's never been more true, I think, actually. Do you know? I mean, I, I listen to Spotify. I listen to a playlist on Spotify called Discover Weekly. And it changes every oh, yeah. week. Um, yeah. And it's obviously curated by someone at Spotify who's some massive indie music nerd. I think it it's actually... That. I don't think it is. I think somebody mentioned this like in the comments that it's actually generated based on stuff that you listen to. It's not a, There's not actually like some guy saying like, "Hey, let's put this on so Lewis can listen to it." It's just like no, I think you, li- you listen to Roy Orbison. Is, is... Well, that means that you must want to listen to Pantera now, and then they. No, I, no, no, no. This one is definitely a curated one because it says it was added or changed eight hours ago. And for example, the artists here, okay, these are the bands. So the first right. one is by Wolf Alice, then Cuckoo Lander, then Ten to Hook, yeah. The Midnight. Uh, Jack Garrett, Will Joseph Cook. See, I haven't heard of any of these people, okay? And so I I will just put this on. It's two hours long, and occasionally I'll hear a song that I like on it, okay? Now, if I like the song, I will usually go through to that artist and then listen to their album. And very, very rarely do I actually like any of the songs on the album, except for that one that I'd listen to. Not saying right. that that's like, you know, there's this phenomenon with the best song on the album, but I think there I think there kind of is. Um, it's, it's, it must be like a... Singles are a reason, are, are, are singles for a reason, sorry, because, you know, they normally are like the song that sells the album, right? Like yeah. that's That was the point of them to begin with. Um, you know, like, like Enter Sandman. Remember Enter Sandman? Everybody heard Enter Sandman by Metallica. And that was the big reason why you went and you bought the Black Album. But then, when you bought the Black Album, you listened through it, you know, it had all those other big hits like Nothing Else Matters and um, Sometimes, yeah. Sex Patrol and, Sometimes you know, the other songs Unforgiven. The album yeah. More of the same, and that's good, okay? That's sometimes what you want, a little bit like... Um, like Welcome to the Jungle, Appetite for Destruction. But then, you know, you think... Welcome to the Jungle was awesome, but then on Appetite for Destruction, you had like Paradise City, Sweet Child of Mine, like all these other huge songs as well. So the, like the album itself was amazing. Um, but if all you ever listened to was Welcome to the Jungle, you'd be missing out on like a whole bunch of other great songs, right? That's but true. A lot of times, you know, an album will just be complete garbage except for that one single, you know, like. It's true. It's true. I can't actually think of any examples of that, but I'm sure I'm right in a very general sense. <laughs> yes, true. Probably. <laughs> so, going back to something we were talking about um, earlier, have you ever taken a sickie or, like, thrown a sick day or, you know? Oh, all the time. God, yeah. Like, no, even I... now to this day, like, I have a pretty cool <laughs> job now, and, like, still I'm, like, finding reasons to, like, not do it. I, I was sort of thinking really of, of, of when you used to have a real job. Yeah, um, yeah, and oh no, all the time. Like, at least once a month, I would be like, fuck this. I need to stay home and play WoW. <laughs> but, like, I'd phone up and be like, oh god, I'm so sick. Can't even see. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm, I'll go to the doctors tomorrow if it's not better. I might need three days off because that's like the, the standard thing at a job, isn't it? You know, like, they'll give you like three days off. Without needing a doctor's note? I, I don't think that's a standard thing at all. I think they'll... I, I'm not even sure you, you can technically have one day off without a doctor's note. But I think most people are fairly gentle. Maybe it's more lax it, over here. <laughs> Jersey, Jersey attitudes are a little bit laid back. Yeah. I think I think if it's more than a day, you have to... You can, you can ask for a doctor's note, I think. I'm not sure. It's tricky. I, I guess um, it's something I've not really thought too much about either. Um, since I, but I used to throw sickies quite regularly, and and I, I guess it, it's one of these things that they always complain about in the news. They say, "Oh, Britain has lost thirty-six billion 
pounds worth of work to sick days. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's one of those things like that. You know, it makes people. If, uh, some days at work, I wouldn't do anything anyway. Even if I was at work, you know, I would I would just browse Facebook and. You know. So that's the thing. I think your average job, like most companies and places and managers and. In my experience, you know, they value you occupying a seat and being there more so than you actually doing any work. Like, it's a weird thing, isn't it? It's like, we need you here in case something happens. But, you know, if nothing happens, then just want you around so you can uh, have coffee with you and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's like such a weird thing. Like, I used to always think, like, just fucking let me come in, do my work. If it takes me an hour to do my work, I'll go home and, you know, rest. And then I'll come back ready for more work next time sort of thing. But you had to, like, do your nine hours a day or whatever it is and stuff. Like, I think the I bigger get... the company, the more people could justify exploiting it, okay? If, they, if they're working for a huge, huge company where they're just a, a tiny cog in, in the machine... I think yeah. it's very easy for you to realistically justify in your head that, oh, it doesn't matter if I'm kind of, you know, they, if, if I'm taking advantage of them, it doesn't matter. They probably deserve it. They can afford it. You know, I've worked hard for them. I've done a lot of stuff for them. It's very yeah. easy to justify in your head to be shitty or lazy or not do anything. But sometimes, the, sometimes these companies don't reward people for their integral parts of things, you know, especially... You know, when I worked in the chemistry, chemical industry, you know, coming up with a solution to a major problem yeah. wouldn't be your solution. You know, it was made at, at work, during work hours on work time, and therefore, you know, you own 0% of that. You know, you, if you created something that was very revolutionary, you had no ownership on it, despite, you know, the value it had to the company. You, know, you could save the company potentially millions of pounds, and sometimes yeah. it wouldn't be valued or seen or you know and that's the problem when you have a very large potentially soulless um company that you work for who who really are just trying to exploit you it's very kind of corporate i think that corporate is not moral um no. by its very nature it's about um about money and that's it's, it's more about it's more robotic i think it's more kind of um so anyway, yeah, the Yogscast has a whole bunch of very <laughs> exciting job openings uh, for potential candidates. If you'd like to send your CV to um, Lewis Brinley at um, whippingboytinder.com, yeah. you, um, you can send him all of, your, all of your skills and abilities, and I'm sure he'd be pleased to consider you for a future position. Um, we have a with- small... The crew, a small pe- group of people, and 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 there's not too much room for for that kind Your of thing. Your massive breasts, but I will do everything I can right to make room for those massive, massive breasts. Anyway. Do you want to hear some common, or do you want to hear some outrageous excuses from people who have shirked off work? Yeah, next time. Okay. Okay. Bye. All right. Next time. Bye.